Okay guys, for this tutorial we are going to unwrap the UVs of this little monkey figure right here. Um, and we're going to use the UV editor and all the tools in there to do that because this is obviously lots more complicated than the soda can or the picnic table or the tennis ball or anything like that. So I'm going to show you all those tools and then you'll be able to unwrap anything you want. Um, and this I'm working in here right now. I'm working in Maya 2020. Um, so there might be a couple things that look a tiny bit different, but it should be really, really close. And if you're running in trouble with that, go ahead and just ask me questions in class about it and I can help you sort that out. Uh, but we are going to, I'm just going to scoot him over here so we've got some space. Um, and I'm going to come up here where it says UVs and open the UV editor. And you can see this mess is our UVs. And so we have to unwind all of this stuff and we have to flatten it all out so that we can see all the UV maps in this little space. And then what we can do is take a picture of that, take it over in Photoshop and we can paint our textures and then it will wrap around the figure like we want. So, um, but first where you have to start untangling all of this. So the best way to get started with that is make sure that you have your figure selected in object mode, just like that, and come up here to UV, and we're gonna do a planar map. I'm gonna go to the option box, um, and this is just a way to get us started and start to sort this out a little bit. I'm just gonna do a planar map down the Z axis, that's sort of just facing our character. You wanna make sure that you have this checked on here, keep image width and height ratio, um, because that will maintain the proportions of our UVs when we map it out here. If you don't do that, it will stretch it to fit the square, and that's going to distort our figure a little bit more than we want. So go ahead and make sure that it's set to the Z axis and keep image width and height ratio, and then you can project it. And now you can see we have a start now on unwinding our UVs. So I'm going to scoot this out of this little box. This box is where all of our UV shells are gonna end up. What we're gonna do is start cutting the UVs apart and making little specific shells for different parts of the figure. Um, and then you'll sort of stuff them back all in this square. And then when you take your picture, your UV shot, then that's it's gonna take a picture of that square and that's what you'll use for your reference to paint in Photoshop. And then you can see here over on this side, you have all of these sort of blue shaded things and then on the back it's red and what that means is that we are looking at all of our UVs from the front if it's blue and from the back if it's red so that's why because we've projected all the way through on the z-axis and so some of these we're actually looking at the back of them here in the UV editor now if you don't see this the way to turn that on is just to come up here to images it's actually under view right here where it says view and just turn shaded on. So if you have wireframe on, it's just going to look normal and you'll just see just the wireframe. But if you turn on shaded, then you can see uh, the direction that they're facing. Now in here in the UV editor, it looks like everything's purple and that's why because we're seeing both of them. So we're going to go ahead and just start cutting this stuff apart. And then you also have this little UV toolkit that opens. Usually it's docked on the edge right here. Um, so we're going to use a bunch of these tools. There's a ton of stuff in here that you can use, guys, to unwind your UVs. Um, I'm mostly probably going to stick with just these two menus right here, unfold and cut and sew. Um, and then here, obviously, you can change your different types of geometry. It's very similar to the modeling toolkit. So you've got vertices, edges, faces that you can select, and then your UVs and your UV shells. So that's kind of the interface that we're working with. So I'm going to come over here and get down to my figure. And I'm actually going to cut the head shell off of the rest first. So I'm just going to, it's kind of tricky. I might just need to move this out of the way for a second. Because we want to get in here inside the neck. And I want, go to edge, I want this edge right here. And usually... If you have a character like this where you have a lot of rows of four-sided faces in both directions, you can double-click on just one edge, and it will actually select the whole edge loop all the way along the length of the edge loop. And so it looks like we've got that 
all the way around. I'm going to hit F so it's a little bit easier. Yeah, see, there's our edge loop going all the way around. And then with that selected, I'm going to get my UV editor back. And I'm just going to come here under a cut and sew in the UV toolkit and just click cut. And now you can see that there's a cut right there. And the edges are kind of lit up. That's a way that you can tell where the edges of your shells are. Now, if that is not on for you, if you are not seeing anything when that happens, click this little icon right here. It looks like a little green window with white trim. That's your texture borders. So if you have that off, you can't really see them. They're there, but you just can't really see them very well. So just turn that on, and that way you can see your borders of your shells. So now we've got two shells. If I come over here and select shells, you can see I have one for the head and one for the body. So I'm just going to take this, and with the Move tool, I'm just going to move it kind of up here out of the way. And we'll start taking apart the body a little bit more. So now, once you get good at this and you have some practice at this, you can actually just select all the edges that you want to cut on the whole figure, plan all out your shells, and then just click Cut one time. Um, we're not going to do that. I'm going to actually go ahead a little bit at a time and cut pieces apart just to sort of show you how it works. So let me go back up to edges, but eventually you'll be able to do that is actually really quickly. And then this is another case where I'll just move this out of the way. But I'm going to start with the arms. And I'm just going to double click the arms right here, shift and double click this one. And then what we need to do is make sure on the back that we've gone all the way around. And see what you can see is we haven't quite. See how this edge comes around and this one comes in and then this one's not selected. So you want to make sure you grab that too. Because we want to make sure that we are cutting apart sort of completely separate open like packages of faces because then we have to unwrap them um, and make them flat so we can paint on them. So I've got those selected and I'll click cut right here. And now we have cut our arms off of our figure. I can actually go ahead and get my shell and I can move these over out of the way. I will do the same thing with my legs. And these, they're pretty small, and so that double click might not work. Yeah, see, it's just that one edge. So we're going to have to, like, select these edges sort of one at a time all the way around. Make sure that the last one you, that you click lines up with the one that you started with. So it makes a complete line all the way around, a complete edge loop. And I'll cut that. And then just do the same thing on the other side. Make sure that you're also getting the same lines on each side. Hopefully with mostly all of your characters that you ever work with, they're pretty symmetrical. Um, and so the geometry will be pretty much the same on both sides. And then so you just want to make sure to keep everything symmetrical and the same on both sides. So I'll cut that there. And that is my legs. Now, there's a couple more things I'm going to need to do with the hands and the legs for sure. Um, but let me go ahead and finish off this torso. We just need to cut this so that we have a separate piece for the front and the back. And that's actually really easy. We'll just come in and I'll get my edges. I'll double click here and that selects the bottom right there. I will hold down shift and double click the side. Make sure that goes all the way up to that arm shell and it does. See how you can see the ends of these selected edges hit the edges of our shells that we've already cut. That's what we want. And then over here, hold down shift and do the same. And then here, it's a little tricky because if I double click this shoulder edge, it, it selects like the whole arm and that's not what we want to do. So I'm actually going to come in and just select the actual edges that I want. So I got this one. I'm going to select this one and then make sure and get the neck too. And make sure that it's all lined up and the end of this comes in against that edge there. And the end of this lines up with this edge of this shell over here. And then got to come back over to the other side and do the same thing. Hold down shift. 
And now I have all the edges of my torso selected. I'm going to go ahead and hit cut. And now we have two separate shells for our torso as well. And when I pull this apart, I think we do. I must have missed something. See how I selected that shell? Oh no, there we go. Okay. So now you can see, since I've taken those apart and they're not overlapping anymore, that you have a red side and a blue side. And that means that these UVs, we're looking at them from the back. These are probably fine, but these are backwards. So a quick way to fix that is I'm going to right click and go to UVs right here to select the UVs. Select all the UVs in this little shell, right click and hold and go down to modify and then come up to flip and that will flip your UVs. And so now we're looking at this from the back like we should. And you can also see over here that it's turned it blue. And that's a good way to sort of know if you still see red at any point on your on your figure as you're doing this, that means that you still have some backwards uh, faces. So now let's go ahead and finish up cutting apart some of these other things. I'm going to go ahead and cut the bottoms off of my feet because we're just going to separate those parts out from the leg. It's going to make it easier later to paint. So I will cut those and then I can just take those shells and move them. We're going to actually remap those in just a second. Um, actually, I'll just go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to select those faces and then what I'm going to do is actually map them on the Y axis because they kind of face the Y axis instead of the Z axis and then that will flatten them out better for us so they'd be easier to use. So planar mapping options, we're going to change this to the Y axis, make sure this is still on and project. And now those are our feet. You can see that they're backwards and they're also way too big. So I can just take them take the UVs, scale them down so they are foot sized again, and then right click and hold and go to modify and up to flip and now they're faced in the right way. And then you can kind of scoot them up wherever you want. It doesn't really matter where we're putting the shells right now because we are going to fix that later on. Eventually they all have to end up in this space, but we're going to just cut everything apart first and then worry about that later. The other thing that you want to do with your legs is that you have them sort of just projected through the center. What you want to do is also create a seam so that whenever we go to unwrap this shell, when we do the unfolding, there will be a place where it can peel apart and go out flat. And usually, especially with characters, the best place to put a seam is like under the arm or inside the leg. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and select these edges and these edges. So that we have seams for our leg maps or leg shells to to unwind. I'm just going to cut those there and you can see those edges light up and then I'm going to do the same thing on the arms. I'm going to actually cut the hand off first. So I've double clicked that and it hasn't gone quite all the way around so we'll see how far it goes around. It's actually just right over the thumb. So I'll hold down shift and do the same thing here and it looks like that has selected all the edges at the top of the hand. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that. And then on the inside of the arm, under here, this line right here, that's going to be where I put my seam in my arm. Let me see if I can get it so we can see better. Yeah, this edge right here is going to be the seam on my arm because that's the one that's right underneath it's easier to hide the edges of your textures on these edges right here and inside the leg. Whereas if you didn't have something that was lining up perfect for your edges and you had your seam like out here, it would be lots more obvious. So that's why we're trying to get in here underneath and put the seam in there. 
So I'm going to go ahead and cut that. And then with the hand, he's kind of got these mitten hands. So what we're going to do is just separate the front from the back, kind of like we did with the torso. I mean, this is going to be the center line right here. So I'm going to double click this and we'll see if it goes all the way around to the other side. And it looks like it does. It actually goes all the way up through the rest of the body, though, too. So I don't want to cut that. I really just want to cut the hand part. So I'm going to undo that and then just by hand go along here and select my edges. It's really important as you do this that you are going ahead and checking. If you double click something, make sure and check that you've actually selected what you want and not anything extra um, so that you don't have to then go back and put the arm back together before you can unwrap it and all that sort of thing. So now we have those edges selected. I'm going to cut that. And now we've separated the front of the hand from the back. And then up here in the UV editor, we can start kind of taking this stuff apart. So here is the outside of my hand right here and the inside. And we are going to do some more work on this because, you know, we've got stuff overlapping. You can see where there's purple. You've got overlapping UVs on top of each other. We've got some reverse stuff. This arm still needs to be unfolded and everything, too. So let's go ahead and we'll do the same thing on the other side. We'll cut the hand off, we'll put the seam under the arm, and then we will cut the front and the back of the hand apart. So we'll go back to edge. We'll double click that edge. It goes mostly around, I think. Yeah, it goes around to here. And then just select those in the same place. Hit F with those selected so that you can zoom in and make sure you have everything selected that you want. And... Let me get under here so I can see the thumb. Looks like we do. Right, so I will cut that. And then I'm going to come under here and get my seam and cut that. And then I'll cut my hand apart here. And again, like later on, as you get more experience with this, you can just select all of these edges all at once if you're careful and then you can just click this the cut button just one time and you have all your shells all separated so that is what we need to do for the hands now we're going to do a little bit of separating on the head as well uh, what we're going to do is we're going to separate the outside of the head from the inside. We've got some eye sockets and some mouth parts that we're going to separate out. And then we're also going to cut the ears out of the head. And then we're going to split the back of the head um, so we can flatten out the head. Similar to the, the video that I showed you where I did that with the sphere. We're going to do a similar process there. But let's go ahead first and start just cutting out the, the places that we don't need to be on the outside of the head. So I'm going to go up to edge. There we go. Oh, edge, please. Thanks. And I'm going to go inside here. And if I turn on wireframe, you can see what we're actually dealing with. We have like a whole sort of inside of the mouth coming down to the throat. A lot of times people will do that for a mouth. They'll put like, it's sometimes called a throat sock where you just model sort of the inside of the mouth. And then this is where you can put teeth and tongue or whatever. So if you're going to animate a figure speaking, um, then all the mouth parts have a space to go into. So that's what that's for. And then we also have eye sockets for our eyeballs. So what I'm going to do, let me go ahead and get back to our shaded mode. I'm going to come in here inside the mouth. Let me move this out of the way. So we're inside the mouth, right? And what I'm going to do is select this edge right here. Actually, I'm going to go in and select this one because we want the texture to go around the lips. So I'm going to go to this edge right here 
and I'll double click that edge and we've modeled this in a way so that you can get the whole edge loop just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that. And then, whoops, I've closed out my UV editor. That's no good. Here we go. So now you can see I've cut that out so I can move my head shell away from the mouth parts. And then I'm just going to I'm going to minimize this and bring that up in a minute. Do the same thing with my eyes. Now something weird is going on with my eyeballs, but um you can actually just take those out and make new spheres. I'm just going to delete those for now actually. Um whenever you know, and then whenever I decide to go and finish this texturing, that was even double. That was weird. Then you can um you can put new eyeballs in if you want. It was just a sphere. It was actually a NURB sphere. That's something I found, and this is a tangent and doesn't have anything to do with texturing. But in 2020, I've not had really good luck at all with any of the NURB surfaces. Um, so I, I would recommend sticking with polys and subdies when you're working in 2020 because NURBs mess up a lot. All right, so anyway, back to UVs, though. Let's go back to edge, and I'm going to, again, try to find, I think I'm going to select this edge right here to cut my eye sockets out. Let me go ahead and get my UV editor up here and cut that. And then the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna get this sort of inside edge and cut that. And then I have my eyeballs that I can just move kind of elsewhere. And then the last cut that I need to make is going to be on the back of the head. Actually, we're going to cut the head in half and then cut the back too. Because um, that's how we did that sphere. That, that, that makes it easier to do that process. So I'm going to go to edge. And this, again, if I double click this, you know, it might go all the way down to the bottom. It looks like it's probably okay. Now, see, it's it's overlapping what we don't want. I suppose I could just come in here and deselect this edge. I'll do that. And then I will hold down, shift, and double click this. That selects the top all the way over to the ear. And then do the same thing on this, double click this edge. And just make sure to come down and deselect this one edge that's going past the edge of our shell. So that is cutting it in half from front to back. And then we need to cut it down the middle here. Now I know definitely if I double click this, it's going to select the entire edge all the way around the face and down the body and everything. So I'm going to have to just come in and just start selecting one at a time, just like this. So it's going to take a second here to get through all these edges. All right, so I'll come over here. Oops, I've docked my UV editor. That's no good. I'll put that back together. All you have to do when that happens is just pull the tabs out and put them back where you want. All right, so I got my shells all separated. I'll go to shell here. And then I, what I'll do actually is I'm going to move these down a little. And then these inside shells. Did I cut that? I don't think I actually hit cut on there, did I? <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I didn't actually hit the cut button. So let me go back and make sure that they're selected and actually click this button over here that says cut because that's what I was trying to do in the first place. And now we have our shell separated. Now we have our separate stuff. So I'm going to take this shell and sort of move it. Huh. See how it's moving the whole thing? I've missed something somewhere, I think. 
Oh, I see. I didn't cut the ears off. That's what's happened. Okay. All right. So that's all we have to do now. We have to go back and just cut the ears off. And this is what happens, guys, when you're working with all these edge loops. It's really easy to like miss something and then you go and try to do the thing and it doesn't work. And then you have to go back and figure out why. So that is what's happened because I hadn't cut the ears out, which means that the front and back was still connected through the ears. So I've selected around this ear. I'm going to come around to the other side and select around this ear right here. And I'll cut right there and that should give us our separate yeah now we've got separate uh, shells for everything so I'll go ahead and select my ear shells and we'll move those over sort of down here again it kind of doesn't matter where they are right now we're just trying to get them out of the way and then with these back shells I want to sort of just move them straight out just like that away from the face on each side on the corresponding side where it's actually attaching try to also move it the same distance as well if you can try and keep this as symmetrical as you can right here so and then we're going to come back to this later so now we have all of our stuff cut apart we've got all of our different shells separated out how we want now we have to come in and start fixing some of the stuff like the overlapping and the reversed and sort of the just neaten these up a little bit so that they're easier to paint with so I'm going to start out with the torso and what I'll do is I'll go ahead and select the UVs and there is a tool up here it's called the smooth tool and this actually works really well. If you have the UV select and you go and get the smooth tool, you have this unfold because you can see over here, there's an unfold down here, um, but this is on a slider so you can actually control it a little bit better. If you unfold this, it just does all the unfolding and there's no like range for you to work with. But if you use the smooth tool, which is up here, smooth, um, then you have where you can just like select the unfold and you can just do it a little bit. Just do it until you feel like it's as unfolded as you want. So the idea is that these faces in the UV editor are as close to the same proportions as the ones in the actual model. Um, that's how you're going to get the best, you know, texture painting. It doesn't always work out, um, but when you get bigger you know faces over here you get sort of pinched textures over here and if stuff is too small it starts to stretch over here so this is actually probably going to be fine there's also a relax which sometimes works where it just takes everything and starts to even it out but sometimes it just collapses stuff so be really careful with relax i like unfold the best and a lot of times what you can do is do a little bit at a time of each one depending on your shell so I'm actually going to, and sometimes what you want to do even is just come in one UV point at a time and just do a little bit of fixing. Just a tiny bit of just neatening up. She got kind of a little bit lopsided right here. So that's the kind of thing that you would do with that. So that I feel like is good enough for the front. And the other thing that you can see is if you select UVs over here, they light up over here. And so you know for sure which part you're working on. So now let's go ahead and do the back. And I'll get my smooth tool out and start to unfold this a little. And this doesn't take very long. You get like, probably that's probably good. There's a little bit of weirdness up here that we'll go and look at and just double check and make sure that's how we want. I'll get, I'll just sort of even that out a little bit, make it a little more symmetrical. Maybe pull this in, that kind of thing. And then come up here and actually this is unfolded okay, I think might want to do something like this just to sort of round it out a little more 
and maybe pull this down a little bit just so it's a little bit more of a round kind of a back of the neck kind of shape so that's the torso done so we can take this and sort of like move it out of our way I'm going to take these UVs actually I'll just do the shells because that's easier and just move them over here out of the way so now the feet basically are done we don't have to do anything with the feet so I'm going to come up here to the arms and I'll select all the UVs on this arm and then I'll get my smooth tool out and because we cut this seam before this is really going to flatten out almost completely by itself just take your unfold and just unflatten it just like that and you can take it all the way to where it won't unfold anymore and that's really all you need to do with the arm it's super easy and simple if you want to come in and start doing some individual moving around of points you can but don't get caught up doing that because that will waste a ton of time if you get caught up sort of nitpickily pushing points around that can kill hours and you accomplish very little so you can do that but just be careful so now I'll go ahead and select these and I think I've got something selected over here so I'm going to make sure to unselect all of that and then get my smooth unfold this arm and it almost looks exactly the same which is what you want so that's our arms unfolded um, and yeah this part is that underarm seam on each side and then it just wraps around the top of the arm just like that so those are our arms And we'll move these. Oh, looks like I've got some weird stuff selected there. Let me undo that. I'll just do the shells. It's easier to do the shells. I'll move the shells down here. There we go. And then we have to, it's, it's pretty much the same thing with these hands too. Select the UVs. Get your smooth tool. I might even just tear this off so that it's out and we can keep using it. Get the smooth. Unfold unfold that turns out to be a lot bigger so you can just get the scale tool and scale it down so it kind of matches a little better and then the same thing over here I'll select this one get the smooth unfold it this one's gonna get really big so I can just scale it down to a manageable size kind of try to match the other side if you can and that's our hands mapped out so I'll move these down over here and this stuff's already all done so now we'll go ahead and actually the feet are done too so I'm going to move those down here too and then we'll do the leg we'll select the UVs get the smooth tool and start unfolding and now see this is not really doing what we want I'll try the relax and that's even worse and this is just it's just not working so what I think that we can do is I'm gonna cut this other seam apart and then sort of flip the UVs and separate them and then sew them back together and then we can unfold them and I think it'll work better so let's go ahead and try that I'm gonna go ahead and go edges here and I will it's a little bit hard to select these it looks like I'm gonna try selecting them on the model that's probably gonna work better so like between this edge and this edge I'm gonna get you know what? I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit closer so I can see better there we go right so I'm gonna select this edge all the way up to the top of the leg And I think there's one more yeah one more edge right there all right so then in the UV editor I'm going to cut that edge I'm going to turn on the shell and then I'm going to I'm going to select the back shell you can actually select the shells on the model too and I'm going to move this out here and I will right click go down to modify and flip Where's my flip okay you know what I gotta have UV selected to do that so get 
my UVs, modify, flip. And then I'm going to scoot this as close as I can to this, like, I don't, it might be okay if they even touch right there. Um, because that's, we want to sew that line back together anyway. So I'll just try and get that as close as I can, just like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and go back to edges and reselect these edges and see how when I select this one, it lights that one up too. It's because it's the same edge. So I'm going to select this edge all the way up and then I'm going to click this where it says sew and that will sew that right together. And then what I can do, and actually what I might do, is take some of these and move them a little closer. Just so there's not that whole stretched part right there. Just scooch that in a little so that these are kind of the same width. Because that's how they are on the actual model. We're trying to maintain proportions. So make sure that you kind of have similar proportions. I would go by these faces just to sort of judge that. There's a little stretching up here and that's unavoidable. Um, but down here, we're pretty close. So I'll get my UVs out. Oops. Get my smooth tool and then unfold this. And then that's gonna be something that's gonna be easier to work with. And maybe you don't wanna fold, unfold it all the way that far. Maybe this is fine. That's actually probably better. And then what we can do is maybe take some of these edges or these UVs and kind of straighten that out a little bit. Just to maintain the proportions. So that's going to be for that leg. Now that leg is finished. Now we have to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the edge on this side. So whenever you try something like this, like the fold was working really good on the arms, um, but not so much on the legs, just know that there's like a million different ways to do things in the UV editor. And so if something doesn't work, there's always something else to try. And that's what we had to do here on the legs. So I'm going to cut that edge and I'm going to take that shell. Actually, not that shell. I'm going to get the other shell. and move that out, oops, get the UVs and flip them, modify, flip, and then scoot that as close as I can, trying to get that point to touch. And then I'll go back to edges Reselect those edges that I cut and sew them back together. Go back to my UVs. Straighten out and make things a little more proportional. And then I'll get all the UVs and get my smooth tool and unfold it. And then I'm going to try and make sure that I can see the other one. And try and make it as much like the other one as I can so that it's mostly symmetrical. And that's probably pretty close. All right. So, and then I think what we did was move this down a little to try to straighten that out a little. And this one as well. All right, so that's the legs done. And so now we've done the whole body, all the parts of the torso are all cut and laid out and flattened just like we want. And now it's time to come up here to the head. So with these parts here, the mouth and the eyeballs, this actually doesn't really matter a lot because, I mean, unless you're going to get the camera right in the character's mouth so you can see the texturing or you're going to animate it talking. You, we really are not going to have to pay too much attention to what these look like. So I'm going to go ahead and, and unfold them as much as I can. But um, it doesn't really matter. We can just put the inside mouth color on this and it should be fine. Um, but yeah, if you're going to animate something that is going to be up close in the camera, if it's like the inside the mouth, then you want to take the time to sort of 
unwrap this in a way that it's usable and all of that. But I'm just going to unfold this and there's going to be overlapping and it's going to not be quite right. But again, it's inside the mouth. We're not going to see it. It doesn't matter. Same thing with the eye sockets. We'll just unfold those as much as we can. And they actually unfold really well because of how they were modeled. So that's our eye sockets. And then the ears are going to be separate pieces. So we kind of have to separate those out. So let me see if I can, I'll have to select it maybe from my actual model because I want the back. Oh, you know what I didn't do is I didn't cut them apart. All right, so we have one more cut to make on the ears. I really just neglected the ears a lot on this project, didn't I? All right, so right along this edge right here, that's where we're going to cut the front and the back of the ears apart. So I've got those selected. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Shift select these edges down to the end and cut those. And now we can separate our ear parts. So I will select this and move it out. And then select the other one and do the same. And then I am going to see, I don't know if this will work, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to, well, first we have to flip our ears so that they're not inside out. So let me get my UVs. And we don't want that end one. We just want the ones on here. And then flip that. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Flip the UVs. And now I'm going to see what happens if I select all of these UVs and smooth them all at the same time and see if it works. And it does not. It just does it on one. So that's okay. Now we know that. So I'm going to go ahead and take this shell. Move this out a little so it's not overlapping. Get the UVs. Smooth them out and unfold them. There's not a ton of unfolding that has to be done with these. They're pretty straightforward. I'm actually going to scooch that out a little bit more so we have more space to work with this. Get the UVs. Oh, yeah, I got to get the smooth. Man, I'm struggling right now. Look at that. Okay, now we're ready. All right. And that's pretty symmetrical right there, which is good. That's what, if you have a really good character model that's neatly modeled, this is a lot easier process. So that's something that you'll have to keep in mind in the spring when you're modeling your characters. All right, so that's our ears done. And now all we have is this head. So... So what we're going to do is similar to what I showed you in the lecture where I take these sides and I flip them and then I sew them back on and then we unfold it. But what I'm going to do is only select some of the UVs to unfold because we want to maintain the edge loops on the face right here. The only thing I'm seeing though before we get into that is we've got a little overlapping from the inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just see if I can tweak that a little let me I'm gonna get inside the mouth again so we can see where we're looking yeah it's this edge right here and then what I'm gonna do with this is I am going to convert this selection to UVs so you just go select Convert selection. And you you can convert into anything that you want. Whatever you have selected, you can pretty much convert it to any other component. But I'm going to convert it to UVs. And then I'm going to unselect all the UVs that are selected down here. Because that's the same edge, if you didn't realize. This down here is the blue part. And then this red part is the part that we're trying to fix. We just make need to make it so that it's not red anymore. Again, it doesn't matter a ton what it looks like because it's kind of inside the mouth. Um, so I'm just going to scale it down a little. 
scale it in, maybe move it around a little. Just try and get it to where there's not overlapping. And then if you want, if you want to get in a little closer, you can even start just moving a few points here and there to kind of just straighten it out a little. There we go. Yeah, you just want to make sure that you don't have any red or any purple. All right, so that'll do for there. And now we can get to work on the head. These are all done, actually, so I'm just going to take these shells and just move them whoops, down here with the rest. And then we'll get back to the head here. So I'm going to flip these UVs so that we have it facing outward. And then this is almost exactly what I want because I wanted to bring it in as close as we could. Oops. I'll just select this shell to the other side without actually touching. So just like that. That's probably going to be perfect. And then same thing over here. I'll get my UV selected and flip them. And then scooch that in as close as we can without touching. All right. So now we're going to have to sew up the sides so that it's all back together and in one piece again, but with the split down the back. And so we're just going to sew this part. We're going to skip the ear and we're going to sew underneath the ear. So we're actually probably just going to do that sort of a little bit at a time. So I'm going to select this edge, and you can see over here that it's lit up both sides, and that's what we want. You select the edges all the way down to the bottom of the shell, and don't go any farther. And then you can sew those right there, or you can go ahead and select the rest and just do one sew at the end. You want to just do one side at a time, just like this. So you want to sew these together and then sew the top of the head together separately. I'll do another sew, just like that. And then we'll do the other side. I'm going to hold down Shift and come down here. i got to get in a little closer so I can get that small edge. And then we'll sew that. Okay, so now we have everything back together, but we don't really, I don't, it's not good in the way that the, the stuff is laid out because we're going to have stretching and pinching and all kinds of things. But we want to make sure and maintain the edge loops how they are on the face because we've actually got a really good layout for the face, like around the eyes and everything. So you want to preserve that and then even out everything else. So I am going to go to UVs and I'm going to use this tool right here, the arrow with the little dotted line circle. This is the lasso selection tool. And what this lets me do is just select a few things at a time by drawing around them, right? So that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to start out kind of over here and I'm going to come up and select this top and then go right in between these faces because I don't want the actual faces just the outside edge selected or like the faces and the and the UVs that are on the actual monkey face 
right so I've got those selected that's what I want now I'm gonna hold down shift and do the same thing on the other side I'm gonna go in right along in between along this row of faces right here all the way down to the bottom you want to make sure that you grab everything and this is the parts that we're going to unfold and relax so let me get my smooth tool out here and with this I think it's going to be good to do a little bit of relaxing first before we just unfold it so do a little bit maybe just because we're trying to even this stuff up a little bit and that's actually probably all we need to do maybe we do a tiny bit more something like that maybe and then when we unfold it oh yeah see it's like overlapping on our ears so that's I think we relaxed it too much so what happens if we unfold from here yeah same thing so if we just do a tiny bit of relaxing and then unfold here there we go that's it that's what we want for our head so we've got our face nice and preserved in the middle and then we might want to just scale it down just a tiny bit just to make sure that we're preserving the um, proportions of the edge loops around here so let me go ahead and get my scale tool and scale this in a little so it sort of lines up better like how it was um, but that's that's what you want for your head right there so now we have successfully unwrapped the head and all the the different parts of the face and the everything else so now the last thing that we do is we select all of these and then we come down here where it says arrange and layout and this layout button will just take all these shells and just put them right in the square just automatically now you can go in and be really careful and strategic and and precise about it and move each shell in and sort of scale it just how you want um, and you're welcome to do that if you feel like that's going to help you paint better um, but you can just click layout right here and it just puts everything all in there so I'm going to go ahead and select this in object mode so you can see now that is our laid out UVs for our monkey so that's all you have to do with that so now the other thing that I do want to show you though is just very basically how to do this in Photoshop so you've got everything all laid out it's exactly how you want you have your object selected in object mode that's really important for this step come up here where it says image and go down to UV snapshot and what that's gonna do is take a picture of this square for you um, and then you can take that over in Photoshop and use it as a guide to paint your texture so I'm gonna go UV snapshot and then hopefully you have set your project it doesn't look like I have though because I'm going into like a default Maya projects folder so let me close that and set my project first which is what I should have done in the first place I know but I have it on my desktop basic texturing tutorials I'll set my project and then come back up to my snapshot again and it's not that didn't change okay so I'll just browse to it that's fine I'm gonna find my basic texturing tutorials and I'm gonna put it in the images folder and then it can just leave it called out UV that's fine just like that I'm gonna click Save and then this size is probably fine that's like a medium range sort of resolution for a texture this Maya IFF format I don't think that I can read that format in Photoshop um, it might be at this point that you can do IFFs in Photoshop but I would not take a chance because that's a native Maya file it's always better to do more of a universal file type so do a PNG there's also um, JPEGs are tricky because they're a little bit lower quality but you've got targets and TIFFs to work with um, but when in doubt 
use a PNG. That's my philosophy. So I have that set up. Everything else, you lock your aspect ratio so you want everything to stay the right size. Everything else is fine. You don't need to change anything else. And go apply and close. And that is everything that you need to do for the UV layout. So next we have to paint the texture. So I'm going to go ahead and save this because I've done it. I've, this is the third time that I've done this. So I'm going to save that there. And now we can close this. Well, let's leave it open because we need to bring it back over and, um, and apply the texture whenever we're ready. But we can close the UV editor because we're done with that. We'll leave Maya open. I'll go ahead and launch Photoshop. And then we will open. And I'll find my UV map that I just exported in my images folder. Here it is right there, output UV. If I open that, you can't really see anything very well because it's transparent and we have a transparent background. But if I were to put in another layer and then make sure that's underneath and fill it with black, Now you, you can see that this is our, our layout that we just created. Um, so what you always want to have is you've got like your background. Always name your layers when you're working in Photoshop. This is your UV layer. Let me double click that so I can type that easier. And now I am going to do just a very simple, I'm not going to try to do like a good job or anything. I just want to show you how this works. But I'm going to do just like a simple, like a, like a pinky, peachy brown face, um, like a Curious George pattern. So it's like brown fur and like a pink face and like a pink, you know, place on the torso and inside the ears and on the hands and the feet. So that's what I'm kind of going for here. So... The first thing is, I'm going to go ahead and make another layer. And this is going to be my fur. And I'm going to fill that with brown right now. Let me get my brown selected. Let's see. Kind of. What's a Curious George Brown? Is that kind of like this here? I feel like it is. I feel like maybe a little bit warmer. Mm, yeah, it's probably good. So that's my fur color that I'm going to use. And I'm just going to fill my fur layer with that. Now, again, if you were, you know, trying to be really careful and do a good job and make it look nice, this would just be a base. And then you would go in, actually put this under the UV so you can see still. You would go in and actually paint fur, like use custom brushes and create textures and make sure that it's going in the right direction and all of that. Um, that's what you, that's what texture painters do for real. I'm just showing you the process, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing that in this tutorial. Um, but I am going to paint some patches for the skin part. So I'm going to make another layer, and that's going to be skin. Make sure also that that's under the UV so I can see that. And now I'm going to get my pink. Let's go kind of, hmm, is that a good Curious George pink? Maybe it needs to be a little warmer, more orangey and peachy. Yeah, that's probably good. So I'm going to start down here with the face. Oops. Let me get my... All right, I'm going to use the paintbrush and just paint my pink in. And again, like I'm just doing it really lazy, like with the mouse right now, just so you can see how it works. You would probably want to use a tablet, you know, and be really careful and nice and precise. That's what you're going to do for the tutorial. I would like for you to take a little bit more care than I am in terms of painting. Um, but I'm just showing you how it works. And then maybe you want to leave the nose brown. I don't remember exactly what Curious George looks like, but I feel like, does he have a brown nose? 
like that or a black nose. I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm going to zoom in a little closer. And then, you know, you can take like your blur tool, wherever that is. Ah, uh, here we go. Kind of start to smudge this a little so it looks better. Now that's the burn tool. That's not what I want. Um, here we go. Here's our smudge. And I'll maybe I'll just make that a little bigger just to kind of soften this edge a little bit. And again, it's very uneven. You would want to come back and be a lot more careful about this. I'm going to leave that lighter pink there. It might be like a little shiny highlight or something. Yeah. And then see if I can smooth out this nose and make it a little nicer nose. I got to finish filling in the pink up there. I know that. And then, yeah, some of this probably needs to come in a little closer so that it's a little more symmetrical. Same thing over here. All right, so I've got just some basic pink laid down for the face. And then let's see, where else do we need some pink? I think, yeah, here on the torso. It looks like I've moved my brown. I've messed up my brown a little bit. Let me just refill that so that it's correct. I'm going to get my eyedropper tool to get the right color. And then fill that. Oh, you know what? Before I do that, look what I've done. See what I did there? I painted the skin on the fur color. Okay. So I'm going to get my magic wand selection tool. And select my pink. And then copy it and paste it in the right place. It's not going to be exactly the same because I'll get I'll have to redo my feathering. And then paste it on the right layer. And now I can go ahead and fix my fur. Okay. So now let's zoom back in here. And I'm just going to leave this for now because you kind of already saw what I did. Let's go back and I'll get my magic wand or my eyedropper and get my pink again. And let's see where else we need to paint. Probably the torso. So you remember that the back of the neck kind of had this sort of horseshoe shape and the front was pretty straight. So this is going to be the front of our little guy. I'm going to zoom in a little closer on here. And then get my paintbrush with my pink and kind of just make a little a little pink belly for our monkey. Get my smooth smudge tool out again and kind of neaten that up. And you can paint this any way you want. If you want to make this a sock monkey, you can do that if you want to make it any other kind of monkey that you want. Feel free to paint this texture any way you feel like. You don't have to do the Curious George monkey if you don't want to. This is completely whatever you want to do. I'm doing this because it's easy so I can show you how it works. So there's my little monkey belly. And then probably... Oops. We're going to have to do the inside of the ears. And if you remember, the ears are kind of a little bit wider like this. So I'm going to get my paintbrush and do just a little bit of something like that. 
and smudge that out around the edges. Now if you're really careful and really precise and exact and you know that your UV maps are exactly the same in reverse from one side to the next, you can paint one half of this and just copy and paste it and put it in the other half. Mine is not like that, so I'm going to just have to do them one at a time. Let me find the other ear. Whoops. Let's see, where's my other ear? There it is down here. I'm just going to do a little inside of the ear thing there. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and see what this looks like. Um, and just leave it at this because we kind of have figured out, I've showed you sort of how it works. You would want to maybe do on the inside of the hands, maybe put some spots on the bottom of the feet. Maybe you want to, you know, texture it completely different than this. But we have enough now that I can show you. So I'm going to hide the visibility of the UVs. Now this is really important and don't forget this step because if you don't do that, then when you go and put the texture on the monkey, it's going to have all the UV points all over it, and that's not what you want. So I'm just going to hide that, and then I'm going to save this. And I'm going to make sure that it's, I'm going to put it in my source images, because I don't really want it in the images folder. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to save a, a Photoshop document of it. So monkey, and I'm going to call this master. Because that's kind of what you want. You want a master document with all of your layers. Um, and then if you wanted to have like maybe has shiny skin and not shiny fur, then you could paint a texture map or like a, a specular map off of the same image and um, just have a bunch of different layers of different things. But you would want to have them saved all in this one Photoshop document on different layers. And then right now then I would then save the color out and just have the color map be separate. So I've got my master already saved and now I'm going to save the color out and I'm probably going to use a PNG for this too. So and then this is going to be called monkey color. And so now I have a master texture file that I can use to work with and paint new things and I have everything there that I need. Um, and then this is going to just be used for the color. So I'll save that. And now we're going to go back up to Maya. And I will go ahead in the Hypershade. And then I would say I'm probably going to use a Fong just because maybe I want to make a little bit of shiny skin at some point. Um, and I want to have the option to do that. I can still paint a specular map so that the fur part isn't as shiny, um, but I'm going to stick with a fong here for sure, just right out. And then here where it says color, I'll get my little checkerboard. I'll click file, and then I'll click my little file folder, and then I need to find monkey color right here. That's the thing that we just painted. And so that texture is now in my shader. And then I'll come over here so you can kind of see both. I'll select him. You should name this monkey, shouldn't you? Always make, make sure that you name everything that you make. Um, and then add material to selection. You can see that it's on there because it got shiny, but I still need to hit six so we can see it. And now we can see our little Curious George that we made and then you would go in and you would paint pink in the eye sockets and inside the mouth parts and maybe you would put a little pink on his hands and feet or whatever you want to do or maybe you would just paint this completely differently than I have um, definitely you'd want to neaten it up and make it better um, but that is texturing a character like figure or anything complicated with the UV editor in Photoshop so what I want you to do is go ahead and paint a texture, paint it however you want, and then do a still render. We'll go ahead and I'll show you how to do that again. 
you know, frame it up so that it looks nice. Do still render. Maybe you want to do more than one still render if you have multiple angles that you want me to see. Um, come up here to File, Save Image. It's going to go right into the Images folder. Make sure that you do not save it as an alias PIX because I can't read those. Um, again, when in doubt, PNG. And then call it, you know, Monkey Texture. Monkey, not money. Spelling. Monkey Texturing. And then that image, which is in here, this is what you can post in Google Classroom for this tutorial. And that is pretty much everything you need to know to get you started with texturing. There's a lot of other stuff, like there's a ton more tools in there. There's a lot of different other sort of more advanced techniques that you can find. Um, but these are the basics and this will get you a long ways with everything. Um, so I look forward to seeing your monkeys.